Officials are warning about a couple of new strains of COVID called the flirt strains. One of them, KP2, is now the dominant variant in the U.S. Now, researchers are still learning about KP2, but say it does appear to be highly transmissible. Joining us now to talk about the variants is Dr. Ulysses Wu from Hartford Healthcare. Dr. Wu, as always, we appreciate your time. Let's talk about the symptoms of KP2. How does it present? So the symptoms of KP2 will be very similar to the symptoms of KP1.1 as well as JN1 as well as the previous Omicron variants. And so the symptomatology is actually really not changed. You still may have fevers, you may have chills, you may have congestion, could develop into a cough if you have a uh, pneumonia, um, but the symptoms really have not changed. Uh, what are, why are, I should say, why are they called FLIRT? Does this stand for something? Yeah, it's an acronym. They're 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 getting much more clever with these, but it really has to. Uh, it derives from the the mutations in in the proteins, and so uh, these are the sites where the mutations have have occurred, and that's why they call it flirt. Mm, it certainly got our attention, right? <laughs> so so KP two is said to be pretty similar to its parent strain JN one, which is highly contagious. Does it seem to cause serious illness? Well, I think it really depends on the patient population. With uh, any of the COVID viruses, they certainly could cause uh, serious illness, really depending on what your comorbid risk factors. The worry with this one is due to the alteration, due to the mutations in the spike protein, what could happen is it could actually become more infective. It may latch onto us a lot easier and may result in more illness, especially those with severe comorbidities. The other worry is that the if you have received the vaccine or if you have had COVID recently, it may not provide complete protection, but it will still provide some protection. But that is also the other worry that you may not get complete protection from a vaccine or from a recent illness. That was kind of our next question here, that vaccination rates have really fallen off and we can say that, you, like as you said, that immunity can wear off too. So uh, if the vaccine might not protect completely against this new variant, do you still think most Americans should be getting a booster shot or the vaccine if they have it? So the recommendation, especially for those who may be at risk or those who are 65 and older, they should still get that booster shot. Mm -hmm. The vaccine, which may not, again, have complete protection will provide some modulation of immunity and uh, possibly lessen the severity of the disease, possibly lessen your chance of acquisition as well. So there's always some possible uh, protection that it will provide for you, just as previous illnesses may provide some protection as well. Yeah, it's interesting. This is feeling more and more like the flu, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the yep. flu shot provides some protection. Yeah, so we're definitely heading there. All right. Th thank you for joining us, Dr. Ulysses Wu from Hartford Healthcare. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me again.